Good, good morning, good night, good afternoon, and good middle of the day, YouTube. I'm your favorite crackhead here with a different video today. Waited till it got dark outside. I am not even gonna lie, I'm a little scary. I mean, a little scared. It's 8 11. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna be watching 20 true animated horror stories because I'm out of video ideas. This is a horror channel, and what the fuck else am I gonna do? So, I just got done playing, finishing. Uh, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 and watching a theory on it. I'm tired. I'm... I got a coffee because I know I'm going to be end up falling asleep after this. Um, so... I might not drop these in canonical order, so... Whichever videos... Before this, go watch it. And, uh, yeah. So. Let's get into it. I'm probably gonna watch... Maybe, maybe 10. I'm not watching, no. I'm not watching 20. So let's get into it. Oh, wait. Set the mood right. Uh, uh. Oh, wait, no. Get the mood right, baby. I know you can't see me, but... I did deliveries for a popular fast food place in my town during the end of my high school years. My friends all had jobs there, too, but they purposefully scheduled us on separate shifts to prevent us from goofing off. They ruined all the fun but the money was still nice to have. Mostly, I would have no interesting stories about my work days, but this one night was an outlier. It was the uh. weekend, and I was working until 10. So I was doing deliveries one after the other. Damn! I was going in. They were coming in steady. They had to snatch so it out of my hand. Yoink! The... He said... The other... I was going in, grabbing the bag, driving to the house, yeah, and repeating that, so that process tedious. non-stop. I think it was around 9 when I got this order, but I can't say for sure because I was kind of mindlessly running the deliveries at this point. I got the bag and pulled up... Oh my gosh. ...mindlessly running the deliveries at this point. I got the bag... This guy looks so devious. Damn, what did they order? That's a fat ass bag. Look like two chess pieces smacked together. Agan pulled up the GPS location for the address, then started driving. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the drive, I realized this was taking me in a different direction than usual. I'd been this way before, but there weren't a ton of houses over here, so most orders would be in the other direction. I drove, not thinking too much of it, until I saw on the GPS that I was one minute away. Let's get this mother net. Looking around, I didn't know a single place I could be one minute away from. There was nothing but trees and the road. No houses or shops. Literally nothing. Regardless, I drove until the GPS said I'd arrived, which was just a quarter mile further down. Yay, you just arrived. I pulled off to the side and did one. Bus a right on 941 on 851 Avenue A. One quick look around, just in case I was missing something. Then I called the customer. <clears throat> the phone rang for a while before they finally picked up. Hey. What's up? Hey, I drove to the address you put in. But it doesn't seem to be right. Can you please confirm the address? I asked, Somebody hoping he just made a typo or something. He repeated the address back to me, but it was the same as the one I had in my GPS. Then he said something I wasn't expecting. Wait, I think I see you. I looked up ahead, and down the road, there was a... First of all, why the f is your head so long? How, what? It's long. Whoa. Why is your head longer than your hand? Second of all, why you got. 
Why are you ordering a pizza and you on the side of the f***ing road? With these nasty ass box ass shoes on. Man, long ass legs, long ass head, short ass arms. Why is one arm nine times longer than the other? Look at this. Don't tell me if I... That's gonna be the same length. Let's get back to this. Why are you ordering a pizza and you on the side of the f***ing road? That doesn't make sense to me, sir. Why are you here? I'm I'm throwing that pizza. I would have thrown that pizza, dropped it right out the window, deuces, skirt it right out. I'm busting at you, pulling off. You can keep your money. I'm out. Skirt. There's a person waving at me. I drove up next to him, but I had a bad feeling in my gut. I rolled the window down, and he Hi. What do I even say to this? Immediately started apologizing, saying the address was tricky to find sometimes. He pointed Ew. behind him, saying his house was down that road. Ew. This road he was referring to looked more like a half-beaten dirt walking trail that went through the forest. I smiled and said it was all right. Handing him the bag through the window. He smiled and thanked me, watching me as I pulled back onto the road and did a U-turn. Yeah. I looked in my mirror at the man still standing on the side of the road and just Long thought to myself head. about how strange that was. Not even a minute into the drive, though, something started to feel wrong. My car was bumpy and leaning to the right. He slashed his tire? It worse by the second. It started to feel dangerous to even drive, so I had to pull over. Before doing Hi. anything else, I called roadside assistance. I didn't know what was wrong yet, or if it had anything to do with that man. But like I said, I had a bad feeling in my gut, and I wasn't taking any chances. Him running down that road. After getting off the phone with them, I got out and looked at my tires. My front right tire was busted, and that was the tire closest to where the man was standing, so I put two and two together pretty quick. I looked back down the road where I came, and in the distance, I saw a figure walking toward me. I hurried into my car. Look at how this distance, boy was running. I saw a figure walk walking toward me. Play the Squidward walking sound. Me. How what? Into my car and locked the door. <laughs> he approached slowly. Prob <laughs> Still walking like Squidward. As the man got closer and closer, I nah. contemplated whether or not to risk driving on my busted tire. <laughs> By some miracle, a truck came down the road and stopped behind me. They got out and asked if I was okay. I saw the man walking quickly back the way he came. Yeah. I took this opportunity yeah. to tell the man from the truck of my suspicions, and he stayed there with me until the roadside assistance truck came, which was only a minute later. I got the police involved, and I wasn't surprised to find out that the name and address the man ordered with was fake. I don't know what he was trying to do, but making me drive all the way out on an empty road hidden by the forest makes me think it would have been more where is she hold up nah i got some for people who, who smile at me like that we don't play them games with tammy nah tammy cut you right up she'll give you that crisp line between your throat slit you like how kano said in that in that one more kind of movie ear to ear Wanna grin ear to ear? I'll cut that right off, boy. Take all your teeth. That looks so nasty. More than just a robbery. Ew! You got a long ass neck. Hey, everybody. Get me away from that man's face. Let's go ahead and review on that one. Alright, so this is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna go through each one. Give my little synopsis on it, then review it. 
that one I feel like it was good. I liked the animation. I didn't like that creepy ass staring at me. Again, you smile at me like that in real life, I'll cut your ear to ear with Tammy. Don't play. I don't play. Me and Tammy do not play. Don't smile at me like that in my whole house now, because I will get Lucy. And don't even get me started on Jerome. Y'all can't see Jerome. Just know he speaks one language, and it's called Pew Pew. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna give that story, I think a 7 out of 10. It was alright, it was alright. Worked full-time. When this happened, mm -hmm. I was 23 and worked full-time at a pizza shop in my local okay. area. I'm not sure if things were going on before this, but as far as I know, everything started and ended on this one night. Me Yo. and my best friend. Wait, which, which one are you? Because whoever this is, you look cracked. Tim worked the night shifts at this pizza place. Which one's you and which one's Tim? It was a real small shop, having just three or four tables inside. Because we specialized in delivery and takeout. Both me and Tim got our jobs there while we were in college, but just okay. never left. Being in a quiet, rural town, too, the job wasn't too much work. Never had busy days, really, just a steady flow of orders sometimes. On this night, there was a light storm outside, and in return, business was slow. There were a few orders here and there. But overall, we didn't have much to do. By 10 p.m., Tim suggested we- Yo! Tim! Ugh! Tim! Nah. We can't be friends no more. You gonna come in looking like something out of Tim Burton? He is Bill Burley, though, so we can stay chill. This man looks like that one guy off of... Bro, he's staring into my soul. He looks like that one guy off of... What is his total drama? The blonde, the blonde party guy. What's his name? Jeff. Jeff. Let me show you. This guy. Built just like him too. Look. Oh, whoops. Built just like him, bro. We started cleaning up the place and maybe even clocking Tim out 15 minutes early. I started cleaning Who up the place. Who is eating at this maybe table? Even out 15 minutes early. Ah, uh, now whoever was eating at this table, well, this one's not that bad, but whoever was eating at this table, y'all gotta go. Don't ever come back. I went with it. That looks so good. I gotta order pizza now. Wait. There's no names on the menu. Grabbing some rags to wipe the tables with when the phone at the front desk rang. There's a fight coming. I still didn't finish watching The Walking Dead yet. Don't, nobody get mad at me. I picked up after a few rings. How can we help you today? Hello? I waited another five. Hi, uh, yeah, we're calling about, we're calling about your car's just ended warranty. Five seconds before putting the phone down and shaking my head. Just some prank call, I thought. I went back to scrubbing the tables, but at the front... Do some people just not know what prank calls are? You call people and, like, impersonate stuff. Or say something, bro. You don't just call and leave it quiet. In front of the store, I saw a glare coming from the window. There was a car parked a few spots back. Get out the parking lot for get the cops involved. Back. I couldn't see too well through the window in the rain, but there was definitely a light on in the car, like a cell phone or something. The pizza shop was on an individual lot, and there were no other cars, so that was the only reason I noticed them. A moment later, the phone rang again. Tim was closer, so he picked up this time. I could hear someone's muffled voice coming from the phone, and after a short talk, Tim hung up. At the same time, the light in the car turned off, and they drove away. 
I told Tim what I saw and how it was a little weird, but he shrugged and said it was just some old man who was ordering a pizza for delivery. I looked back at the now empty parking lot. It wouldn't make much sense for someone to order a pizza for delivery from right outside the shop, so I figured Tim was right and it was nothing. He started making the pizza. I mean, it was probably just an old guy who didn't know what, what to do. Like, right? Duh, while I continued cleaning. Ten minutes later, Tim boxed it up and handed it off to me to deliver. I ran through the rain to my box it up Whoa. and handed it off to me to deliver. I ran okay, through the rain delicious. to my car. Then pulled up the address on my phone, look 11 like minutes Tim away, not too bad. I pulled out and started making my way there. The roads were dead, nobody out at all. Google Maps took me down to a neighborhood full of large homes, then had me turn down a long driveway that led to a cul-de-sac, where there were three more driveways, each leading to a different house. I went down the one Maps told me to and pulled up next to the home. It was one of those large expensive houses, but pretty old looking and not very modern at all. I parked the car and double checked the address with the house number, then picked up the pizza and ran up to the front door. Hello, pizza delivery. I took a step back and looked at the front of the house. All of the lights were off. I dialed Tim's Jason? cell and had him call the guy who ordered. My phone buzzed a moment later, and Tim told me that his call went straight to voicemail. I shook my head in frustration and ran back through the rain to my car. And Leave got it in. at the door, bro. I tossed the pizza on the passenger seat and started backing out. This wasn't out of the ordinary, getting fake orders or dead deliveries, but it still annoyed me every time. When I got back, Tim was cleaning and said there were no more orders, so we were good to finish up and head out. I tossed the pizza in the trash and started helping him. Both of us were in the back, cleaning the ovens and wiping the prep counters, when a sudden bang came from the front of the building. We looked at each other, then ran to the front. At first, we didn't see anything, but then Tim spotted a small crack on the door. I walked over and opened it, and right outside was a heavy rock, big enough to throw and do some damage with. I looked around, seeing the parking lot was completely empty and nobody was nearby. Both you of us were really confused and come kind back. of freaked out. We talked about maybe calling the cops, but neither of us wanted to deal with that right now. To put things in perspective, it was 10 minutes before we were off. And if we called, then we'd be here for another hour at least. I would have been there for like another 20 minutes, bro. I just gotta tell the cops, hey, somebody's bothering us. The crack in the door them. wasn't too big, not really that noticeable. So we chose to wait and just tell our manager the next day instead. We quickly finished up with the cleaning and left through the back door where our cars were parked. On the drive. I've home. I rethought all the strange things that happened, and it made me uneasy. I pulled into my driveway and walked inside. It was late, so I knew I had to get in bed soon, but I wanted something to snack on first. I went to the kitchen to see what I had, but before I even opened the pantry, I heard a car splash through the puddles on the street outside my house. From the sound of it, I could tell it was parking. I walked over to my window and peeked outside, seeing a car parked right in front of my driveway. I see now that one's on you. You could have just not been nosy. Like you didn't have to look. You didn't have to look out the window, bro. Could have just been a neighbor, bro. It only took me a second to realize it was the same car. Why is this car got a license plate? Or I'd seen outside the pizza shop. A cold rush went through me, Whoa. and I stayed in the window to see what they were doing. 
The car was still on, Ugh. but I couldn't see through their window. <sighs> After a minute of no movement, I took out my phone and called Tim, telling him that I think one of the customers followed me home and was... Bro, that's literally... That could have just been your neighbor, bro. Do you not know what your neighbor car looked like? Parked right outside my house. Are you serious? You need to call the cops. Something's not right. He said, urging me to hang up and call the police immediately. I don't know why I was so nervous to call the cops, but hearing Tim say it made me feel better about it. I moved away from the window and dialed 911. The lady on the line said that they would have someone on their way and that I should stay hidden and wait. I heard a car door open and close, so I quickly said okay and hung up. You gotta stay on the Looking line, out dumbass. The window, a man was walking up my driveway. He was wearing dark clothes, covering his whole body, and a hood covering his face. Now you in my home. Now you can catch Lucy's business. Now you can catch Lu- Now you can catch Lucy's business. As he approached the house, I closed the curtains by the window and waited. Should it just rain? His out? footsteps came to the front door. Stairs. Then they continued across the front of the house until they reached the outside of the window and stopped. The sudden silence made the sound of the rain increasingly loud. Outer. Ow, my neck. I felt like I was standing there quietly for minutes before I stepped forward and moved the curtain an inch to the side, Are you dumb? just enough to peek through. Oh my gosh! I'm so embarrassed that got me. Curtain an inch to the side, just enough to peek through. It was so sudden and it, I would... Catch this word. Dang! You in my window, I'm, I'm punching through that glass, I'm shattering and busting through your head. The man's cold. Ugh! He is high, high. Ugh, what are you tripping on? Even the color of your eye changed. His eyes stared back at me. I let go of the curtain, and the man so and banged on the window. Get <clears throat> <clears throat> the hell off my window! I stood a few Getting feet your away, fingerprints all up on it, dirty. To death. And just as quick as it started, it ended. There was no more banging, no footsteps, nothing. All that was left was the sound of the raindrops clicking against the window. I'm a phantom. I'm John Cena. Although I never heard the man leave, he was gone when the police showed up. No car in your house. or man in sight. I told them all that had happened from the middle of my shift to the end of the night. They looked at me like I was crazy, and part of me felt crazy too. None of it made any sense, and there didn't seem to be any motive for the man to have done what he did. Honestly, because of that, the whole night had me messed up for a while. Going through something as senseless as that was really just fucked with my head. I'm hoping that by sharing this, someone may be able to help me understand what happened, or why the man did what he did. It sounds odd, but even now, when it gets really quiet on rainy days, there's an eerie feeling that rushes through me, bringing me back to that night. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So was it?
What? That one confused me. But overall, it was pretty good. Uh, nothing too much. I'm gonna give it a seven. Seven. Yep. Yeah, seven. We started off pretty okay, and we're getting a little. It's a little lacking. It's a little lacking. That one, it really made me just think, like, oh, what would I do in that situation? Because, really, the guy was just stalking you. I mean, that's still bad, don't get me wrong. But, like, I feel like I can handle a stalker, you know? Again, we got Tammy, we got Lucy. And you don't want to taste Jerome. You don't want to taste Jerome. Jerome don't play. Uh, let me get Jerome. I think y'all deserve to see. Shit. I think y'all deserve to see Jerome. Jerome can handle that business. Jerome pull up on all y'all. Because that's what Jerome does. He pull up and he busts out. This man is... You ever feel like that when you play in a game? Another Target Listen video? background of this story. I'm a female. And I worked at Target for a while. Over a year ago, the Target that I worked at was very close to my apartment at the time, and it was a pretty enjoyable job for me. My favorite part was talking with coworkers and becoming friends. Do y'all only sell certain things? Why y'all got more detergent above some Captain Crunch? Some 80s cereal, bro. Friends with them. Mostly what I would do is work in the clothing. Where is this at? department i would do all sorts of things there and it wasn't very stressful because things usually don't get busy like they do in the grocery section at the time of this story i had been working there for almost four months i remember it very well it all started on a typical day at work i was in the clothing department particularly the women's section straightening up items that were out of place. wait 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 y'all just gonna throw piles of clothes and oh my gosh oh my gosh you don't place. It was during the daytime, and the store was calm. What is this? Calm. This is when a tall man approached me. Assuming he was a customer who had a question about something, I greeted him, asking how I could help. The man stood there, looking. You got some crusty ass lips, man. Wait. Wait. First of all, he's also built like Jeff from Total Drama. Why? What? How? This makes... This makes... The layout of this place makes zero sense. Why is the clothing literally right by the exit? In front of more clothing! directly at me with a somewhat creepy grin on his face for a moment Who? whoever just knocked on my door you can catch this word he then said yes you can help me by go go brush your teeth going out with me tonight I laughed it off I had no interest in going out with the man but I wasn't scared of him or anything I just told him that I had a boyfriend, even though I didn't actually have one. My Bible just fell, bro. This was always the best way to tell off the guy that I wasn't interested in, in my experience. The man replied rather quickly, saying, No, you don't. I told him that I did, and I asked the man if he needed help finding him, saying, No, you don't. I told him that... I'm pregnant. But I did. And I asked the man if he needed help finding anything. He then responded with an even creepier reply. Yes, directions to your house. I laughed. I'm gonna stop laughing it off and start having him catch that word. Got this remark as well. I was just hoping that the man was joking around. Because this was getting really weird. This After one's actually kind of creepy. I told him that I had a lot of work to do. And I told him to have a good day. Then I started making my way to another section of the large clothing department that we had. The clothing area was practically big enough to get lost in. I was hoping to lose sight of the man. But when I started moving away, he followed. When I had made it to another section... 
Mm. Next I come here. he was still next to me, I stopped. I didn't have a problem with confrontation, and I said to the man, Why are you following me? You're kind of creeping me out. The guy put his hands up as if to say, My bad. He then walked away, and it was a huge relief. I had dealt with customers asking me out or trying to flirt with me a couple of times. It didn't happen very often, but here and there it did. None of them had been nearly as bad as this, though. I kept working for several hours. By then, I had forgotten about my experience earlier, but I soon remembered when I spotted the same man. I couldn't believe it at first. This was now about three hours after our first interaction. To me, it was still mind-blowing that he was still in the store. Maybe he had left and then come back. Either way, it was strange, and it was now a bigger concern for me, because shortly after I had spotted him, I saw him look over at me and then look quickly away. The man was sort of far away too. It looked like he was- Yeah, he can- I'ma walk up there. He can go get- Wait, what the f How tall is this man? He was almost hiding from me. He stood, mostly covered by a rack of clothing, staring in my direction. I moved slightly and kept working, to which the man moved slightly as well to keep looking at me. I stopped and sighed. This was really annoying now. I walked away, leaving what I was doing. I moved to a whole nother section of the store, far away from that one. There, I didn't really have any work to do, but I just wanted to get that man off of me. I was now in the grocery area, and I was there for about a minute before spotting the man again. He was walking into the area, and he saw me for a split second, and then disappeared into a nearby aisle. At this point, I decided for a split room. second, and then disappeared again. again. He was walking into the area, and he saw me for a split Meow. second, and then disappeared into a nearby aisle. At this point, I decided to take my break. I had one that I could take at any time, and I was planning to after I had finished the work that I was doing in the clothing department. But seeing as this creep was back and still following me around, I decided to just take my break now. I radioed in on my walkie-talkie to let my supervisor know I would be taking my break. Then I headed towards the front end of the store. Our break room was two doors at the front, and I walked in there. When I got inside the break room, I thought back to the crazy situation. Did that man seriously think he was being slick? I mean, I spotted him twice, and it was like he thought I couldn't see him. I just hoped that he would notice I was not there anymore and then leave. I'm not going to lie. I took a little bit of extra time on my break. I was pretty concerned to return back out Metro and see the man right again. If I did see him, I was going to have to tell a coworker or our security team. I didn't want to have to do that, but I would if it was necessary. When I went back out though, I didn't notice the man anywhere. I went back to work in the clothing department, but was much more alert and constantly looking around. I didn't see the guy for the rest of my shift that night, which was about two more hours. I was really happy about this, but still, I thought possibly he was still there looking at me somewhere and had just gotten better about hiding. At the end of the day though, I don't think he was. I left work and went home, not seeing the guy at all. Soon, I forgot all about him. I worked several more times that week, mostly my usual shifts. These people are so dumb. They're not like calling the cops or anything, bro. One night, the very next week, I found myself working on a quiet evening. I was almost done, and it was past the busy amount of customers that we would usually get between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Targeting every quiet. I was doing my usual work of organizing a section of the clothing department. That's when I got a call on my walkie. Somebody radioed asking for me, and I radioed back telling them to go ahead. I wasn't quite sure who had said it, but that wasn't uncommon. A big store like Target has so many employees, plus there are always new people. A handful of my coworkers, I could instantly recognize their voices over the walkie-talkie, but many of them, I could not. After telling them to go ahead, they asked me to go to channel three. This is how we would communicate without other employees hearing us. It was used for more descript details or directions on what we were supposed to do. After turning to three, I told them to go ahead again. That's when I was told that I was needed in receiving and to help with something quick. I told them that I was on my way and began walking over. Receiving was the back room of the store, basically. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't work back there a lot, but I had helped with things there several times in the past. It took me a few minutes to walk all the way back there. And when I had made it, I exited the store into the back. Things were very quiet back there. I had expected to see someone there waiting for me. I turned my walkie to channel three again and said that I was in receiving. Nobody said anything, but I heard my voice echo onto somebody else's walkie nearby. I then called out, asking where they were, but I didn't get a response. 
I walked closer to the voice, which was near one of the doors leading to outside. I noticed that it was open, and I could see outside into the night. That's when I saw the man again. He stepped out from behind a shelf back there. Catch this work. There. I couldn't believe he was here. That was you on the walkie, wasn't it? I said to him. The man just started walking towards me. I backed away as he got closer. I looked at how much taller he was than me. If he tried to grab me, it would be difficult to get away. He got closer and I turned around, but as soon as I did, he grabbed my arm. Then he started to pull me backwards. I started yelling, but back there, it wasn't likely anybody would hear me. Suddenly, I heard the doors leading back oh, to the shopping area down. open. I then saw one of my coworkers, Amy, walking over. I yelled to her and she asked what was going on. The man let me go and then sprinted out the doors outside. I ran over to Amy and explained to her what had happened. Amy told me that she had heard the person asking me to go to channel three. She said that when she didn't recognize the voice and was just being nosy in general, she turned to channel three as well. She was wondering what I was being asked to do. When she heard I was supposed to go to receiving, she found it strange because she had just been there earlier in the night and wasn't aware of anything that would be done back there. She decided to see for herself and I'm really glad that she did. We had to call the police and report the incident, but unfortunately, not much could be done. The man had bought a walkie-talkie and got on the same frequency as us, which was not hard to do at all. Many standard walkie-talkies were capable of it. I'm just glad I was all right. I worked what at do you mean Fish. nothing could be done? He could he grabbed me. Amazon is overcharging you. All right, so, so that's how I know that one was fake. Uh, I'm gonna get that one. Ten out of ten. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Um, that was it. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Remember, don't snort, but stay my crackheads. And I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace. I think I like this little life. Good morning, guys. Oh! Oh! Oh!